The major television networks have taken their case against a new service called Aereo to the Supreme Court. The case is ABC, CBS, NBC Universal et al. versus Aereo, and whether Aereo's online streaming method of sending TV signals to its subscribers from groups of antennas violates copyright law. Arise News legal analyst Seema Iyer is here to explain this case and another important one too. Hey. Hello. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Okay, so you know what? I, I actually didn't really know much about this service other than our executive producer. Uh, <laughs> Full uh, disclosure. Yeah, Dick Jefferson has it and was telling me about it. So basically, this company, which is owned by Barry Diller. Right. Right. Who, in full disclosure, my old boss from USA Network. Okay, we're just telling all kinds <laughs> yes, of Yes, I, uh, I heard that yeah. we're supposed to do that on television. That's right, we're full supposed disclosure, to. That's right. right. We're okay. supposed to disclose everything. Well, he has this company where you can get all the major networks that broadcast over the air. Right. On online on you know your device right. that connects to the internet right and of course these broadcast companies don't like that that's correct okay. because they're saying it's a violation of the copyright law Okay. Now, the reason that it is potentially is because usually when you retransmit something, you have to pay the station a fee, a consent fee. And in this case, they're not doing it. So all the big shots are getting together and collectively suing Aereo and asking the Supreme Court to hear this case. And, and that was what I was going to ask you about. Okay, so they, they've, they've asked the Supreme Court to hear this case, um, but... Let me see, how is it? The petitioner is asking the court to overturn the second court of appeals ruling. Right, the okay. second cir circuit, circuit court, court of appeals. Right. So what is their finding? Okay, so what they said is because the signal is being, uh, is being received from the antennas and then transmitted through your internet for a private performance, which sounds a little risque, but and it's not. And you have to put, sort of put air quotes on that, the right, private, private performance. Right, private performance. Yes. So, so, so I am not broadcasting that. I'm not taking your signal and then broadcasting Testing it out. I am just watching it for myself. And that does not require the retransmission fee. So I, I think the best way to say this is that it's in this cloud. And if I have access to the cloud and I'm using it just for myself, then I don't have to pay that retransmission fee. If I was taking that signal and then getting a whole new audience, that's when the fee may be applicable. Mm, okay. And yeah, and, and that's the the devil is in that detail. That they, it very that, much so. That these little tiny uh, mm -hmm. antennas uh, that my executive producer Dick is telling me is the size of a dime. He's really fascinated by the size. Get and Dick they in assign, here. I know. That's why. <laughs> they assign one per subscriber, right? Right. And that's how they're getting around this. Right. And so exactly. they're asking the Supreme Court to to take this case. And has the Supreme Court denied taking this case before? Well, they have. Uh, thought about other cases and and have heard other arguments from other similar types of vendors. Okay. But at this point, they haven't decided whether they're going to hear the argument yet. Okay. So I, we're going to wait and see. So then their decision that they that they will give at the end of the session or whenever that is going to be basically whether or not it can be argued before them. Is that Exactly. What, that's what we're waiting to hear. That's what we're waiting to hear. What do you think the likelihood is, considering I, that they haven't taken other similar? I think they will because it poses this new area where which is new technology that hasn't been litigated before. So that's the whole point of the Supreme Court, right? Either it's a court of higher ruling or second chance, or it's a court to decide new law. And in this situation, that's what we're talking about And that's here. what I wanted to ask you about. What does this say about our laws compared to the rapidly advancing technology? Right, well before, the whole issue here is getting the broadcast stations on your tablet and on your phone. We didn't have this problem 20 or 30 years ago. So if technology is changing, the law has to change with it. 20, 30 years ago, when we thought clouds, we thought cirrus clouds. Now we're talking <laughs> about internet clouds. We're talking about where information is transmitted through and who has access to that ins information. So the law has to change. And, and perhaps this would be right for the Supreme Court to look at it, because if they find that change, they can direct some to Congress. And, and just between you and me, Sima, uh, you know, I, and all props go to Barry Diller. Hasn't he kind of found a loophole to be able to provide this? Uh, he has. He has because, again, he's not, he's not directly profiting and publicly broadcasting from someone else's station. Again, it's he's paying per, per subscriber. Everybody pays. Dick Jefferson pays a fee to get that on his Internet device. So he has found somewhat of a loophole. But, again, it's because 
the laws are so old. Mm -hmm. That's why the loophole exists. If the laws were changed, then it would it would satisfy this new area. Potentially, this case right. case might close the right the, the loophole. Right. Exactly. Okay. All right. Good. Well, we'll keep our eye on that. We'll see. That. So let's talk about this other case. Okay. This is the case of uh, Kansas versus Cheever. Right. Okay. And uh, so let's see. It says that whether a defendant's Fifth Amendment right has been violated when the state puts into evidence a court-ordered mental health evaluation to rebut the defense mental health expert who testified that the defendant lacked intent to commit murder. That's a big sentence. Translate right. that to okay. English. Okay, so, what's the case so here? In, in this case, we're talking about the Fifth Amendment, the right against self-incrimination, right? The right that you have not to incriminate yourself. In this case, basically, Mr. Cheever shot a police officer. And instead of saying that he had a psychiatric defense because there are doctors testifying on both sides, he's claiming he was voluntarily intoxicated and therefore could not form the requisite intent. Okay. So then in this case, so um, were his Fifth Amendment rights violated as we understand them now? I don't think so. In my opinion and what the state court usually shows is that uh, you waive your Fifth Amendment right when you put your uh, state of mind at issue. Now, to be specific, this case started in federal court. For procedural reasons, it was knocked out of federal court. The state court picked it up. When it was in federal court, the court ordered a mental health evaluation. Fine, that was okay in, in federal court. It gets to state court, it goes to trial, and at that point, the defense puts out this uh, voluntary intoxication. He was too high on meth to form the intent. But what you're asking the jury to look at is what his mental condition was at that moment in time because of the drugs that he was on. So they put in a psychiatric pharmacist, yes, that's really a job, <laughs> and they had one testify. So what does the state do? To rebut that, the state says, wait a minute, we have this doctor that examined you back when it was in federal court. We're gonna call that doctor to testify against you in, re in rebuttal. Everywhere, everyone thinks this is completely appropriate, but the Kansas State Supreme Court they found that because it was the federal court that ordered that mental health evaluation, that should not have been allowed mm -hmm. to be brought in through rebuttal. Okay. Does, and, is, and is that a matter of, of different rules that apply between the federal court and the state court? Or is this a... Right. Well, that's what the Kansas Supreme Court is exactly looking at. That's exactly right. That they are saying, oh, well, their rule was different than ours. But big picture here, okay, big picture. If I put my mental health and condition into evidence, I put that at issue. I have waived my right to not give my side of the story, which is why the state has a right. It is about fairness. This is the way law is conducted everywhere. You can't call it voluntary intoxication when it's really just a psych defense. Mm -hmm. It's a rose by a different name. Right, exactly. That's exactly it. All right, well, because we love you so much, we're going to have you back tomorrow. We talked a little bit about a case uh, involving uh, affirmative action in, Mich That's in Michigan. That's correct. Give us a preview. So I believe that tomorrow are the arguments, and then we'll find out what the ruling is with respect to affirmative action, and that'll be in front of the Supreme Court. So after we hear the arguments in the morning, we'll come and talk about it at night. All right, look forward to that. See you Thank you, as Thank always. You. And this is Arise America.